Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about NURBS. To not get into Patreon too much, Patreon is a service that I am a part of where uh, my Patreon subscribers or patrons can uh, subscribe to me and I have a couple different tier levels of, of uh, subscription amounts that they can pay a certain amount of money every month for certain perks, okay? I don't, this video is not about that so much, but I do have one of my patrons on there has subscribed to one of my higher levels, which allows them to request a custom video each month that they are a subscriber. His first video that he asked me to talk about, though, is a lot about NURBS surfaces, and I feel like it would be important, not just for him, but maybe even for all of you, to talk a little bit more about NURBS and what they are and how they kind of work. We have talked very briefly about NURBS on the channel before. It's been mainly the Polygon show here at the Maya Tool Belt, mainly because that's what I've, I typically work with uh, in the game industry and, and other things too. Uh, polygons, I feel like, are much more flexible than NURBS. And also, since, since I deal with a lot of real-time applications like games and things like that, uh, they don't really um, support NURBS as much as polygons for the vast majority of the time. So I deal with polygons almost exclusively in my day-to-day -day working, so I haven't talked a lot about NURBS on the channel, but we're going to change that today. So the only NURBS video I currently have on the channel, for the most part, are things like the services menu, which you can find here, like Loft and Revolve and the Buy Rail tool. I have videos going over these certain commands. I also have videos going over uh, NURBS components, like if I create this NURBS sphere. Talk about the isoparm, what that is, control vertex, what that is, surface patches, holes, and so on. So those components of a NURBS object. But in this video, I kind of want to go a little bit further than just the components and talk a little bit about NURBS geometry as a whole and what it is. Let me hide the grid for now. So the word NURBS is short for non-uniform rational B splines. I still remember that from when I was in art school. So NURBS in a nutshell are made of curves. Okay, So this object, this sphere, is made of curves with a surface patch between the curves at certain uh, vertex points, or control vertex points, I should say. So as a NURBS surface, what is that? Well, for beginners in Maya especially, it's or beginners in 3D in general, it's kind of confusing because here I have a NURBS sphere. Let me go and create a polygon sphere now. Create polygon primitives sphere. So here's my polygon equivalent. So if I select them both, you can immediately see the difference in just the geometry and how it's portrayed, right? So polygons are made of uh, facets or vertex points that have surfaces between them. This is made of curves. So these are edges, curves, okay? Geometry is much simpler when it comes to the math because all we need it to do to create a polygon object is say, all right, but at this x, y, z coordinate, this x, y, z coordinate, this one, and this one, these two, these four x, y, z coordinates, we're going to create a surface between them. And it does that throughout the entire object. This one, each curve, is a math equation, essentially, and it's having to calculate all of that at once. So math-wise, polygons are easier for computers to just spit out, because all it is is essentially coordinates. With uh, NURBS, we're talking about all these complex, or at least more complex, uh, math uh, systems and equations and things. <clears throat> so that's the kind of the main, like, mathematical difference between polygons and NURBS. Now polygons also, because it is just facets, for example, I can, for example, just select some faces, and let's say I go to the Edit Mesh menu and extrude them. I can just pull this out and have another little section of this sphere just extruding out like this, like making like an arm off this sphere. NURBS, you can't really do that, at least not the same way, not as easily. Like I can't just, you know, select a surface patch, for example, and extrude it out. Like if we go to the surfaces menu, the extrude command that we have here is about extruding uh, a profile shape along a curve, which I have a video going over, but that's not the same as extruding out a surface patch out to create like this 3D volume like I did with extruding faces. So with NURBS, 
we have to go about things a little differently. And the reason why that is, like, what's what's the big deal? Why can't we just extrude? Let me just delete this thing. A NURBS surface is essentially a plane. Let me go to create NURBS primitives. Let me break this off. So all these NURBS primitives. Let me start with a plane. Click on this one. NURBS plane. Like this. So it's a flat surface. This NURBS sphere is also a plane that has been reshaped and formed into a ball. Okay, I'll explain that a little bit better in just a little bit first. First I want to show you this plane and let's go and create a cube. So here I have a NURBS cube. Now you might think to yourself, oh it's just like the polygon cube, it's six sides. You should be able to just do the same sort of thing as you could with a polygon cube, right? Well, no, actually. If I open the outliner here, we can look at my NURBS sphere. We can see that there, my NURBS plane. But look at my NURBS cube. This is a group. If I expand this, there's actually six different sides of this cube. They're all separate NURBS planes. Like if I were to just click on this NURBS cube, I would not select the cube. I would select one of the faces of the cube, which is its own separate NURBS plane. I'd have to select the entire group to select the entire cube. So a NURBS cube, just straight out of the box, go to create NURBS primitives cube, gives you a group of six planes. Okay? So all NURBS objects are essentially planes, just configured in different ways to look like other, other shapes. Let me uh, delete our cube here, delete the plane. Let's go ahead and go back to create NURBS primitives again. Let's make a cylinder. Okay, it looks like a cylinder, but this is essentially a plane, and I'll show you, again, I'm going to show you uh, proof of that in a little bit. Let's look at the cone. Do you notice that the cone does not have a cap as well as the cylinder? Yeah, okay, so if I go into the NURBS cylinder options, I can decide, you know what, I, want, I do want some caps. Let's do both a top and a bottom cap right here. So I'm going to hit create, and you'll notice what happens here. If you look at my NURB cylinder here, I have bottom cap and top cap has been created. Okay, so it's these are separate pieces of my cylinder. So NURBS just is not able to create a enclosed 3D volumetric shape in the same way that polygons are able to do. That's one reason why a lot of people don't really use NURBS so much. Now there are other applications out there that are more focused on NURBS and make NURBS modeling easier, such as, for example, Rhino, which is a application that my patron mentioned in his request for this video, or for a video. Uh, Rhino is very NURBS friendly, <laughs> so to speak. Maya is very polygon friendly, just so you understand. Um, that I think my uh, at least this is my opinion. I think my, uh, while the NURBS are obviously here and they have tools and commands associated with them, I think Maya uh, favors polygons quite a bit. Let me get rid of all that stuff. All right. So how? Why are these planes? Why do I keep saying oh, this? In this NURBS sphere is essentially a plane. Well, let me go ahead and, exp and make this bigger like this. And if we go into over here to the inputs for make NURBS sphere, we can look at these uh, options for the creation of the sphere. And the main one we're going to look at is the start sweep and end sweep. Right now the start sweep is at zero, the end sweep is at 360, which is a, all the way around a circle, right? So if I make this start sweep 180, for example. So what we have here is, if, I don't know, it's hard to visualize, but if I look at the pole of the sphere, I'm going to right click and choose control vertex, and right there I can select I can select this control vertex. However, if I just left click on the vertex like this and pull it out, look at that. At the poles of a NURB sphere are actually lots of different, lots of little CVs right on top of each other. There we go. So there I've unraveled the pole of this uh, NURBS object. I mean, let me uh, take the sections down to say something a bit more manageable. There's not quite so many points. So if I were to take the time to unravel both poles, 
I could very easily start unwrapping this piece of geometry out. And if I spent a long time doing so, moving all these points around, I could eventually get to make this whole thing just one big plane. I could unround, get, make all the points flat, pull all these out, like I'm doing here. And eventually, I could get to the point where this corner and there's this corner, and then the, the corresponding corners down here, just have it all pulled out into the shape of one big plane. Okay, so and that's every nerves object. Every nerves object is essentially made just like this one, where the surface is essentially, in the grand scheme of things, this is a plane that has been shaped into a circle or shaped into an orb or ball, however you want to say that. So we'll go back to create nerves primitives, and let's look at a torus, for example. So it's like this donut shape, right? How is this a plane? Every nerves object has a seam. So there's the seam. You see that darker line there? That's a seam right there. So first I'll go into the options for make nerves torus. And let's say, again, start sweep, end sweep. Let me pull this out like this. So the seam breaks away like that. And so once I've told it to break that seam, and we can go to the start sweep, we'll go this way with it, so we can break that off. So now let's, go, let's just pull this all the way out like this. For example, so all we've done is taken that seam, we've broken that seam there, and we've just pulled the geometry around like this. And there's also the minor sweep. There's another seam down here. And if we pull that minor sweep apart, snap, just like that, we get this shape. Now you can look at this shape, and you just imagine I can pull all these points out and flatten them out, and essentially what do I get? A big plane. Yep. Even if, even if I take this back to the seam and just kind of release it a little bit, just, just un pull up that sweep seam right there. So there's the seams of this torus, and if I were to unravel this torus at the seams, just like I've done here, and just keep on pulling and pushing, I could flatten this thing out into one big plane. So even the torus is essentially a plane that's been sealed together at the seams, okay? So that's NURBS in a nutshell when it comes to like the surface properties. So when it comes to wanting to like extrude objects with NURBS, we would have to use kind of like trickery to get that to work. It's not really doing it, but it's kind of given the illusion of doing it. For example, let me again create some more NURBS objects here. And let's just say, for example, I want to do a Boolean NURBS and let's do a cylinder and in the cylinder options, make sure I have both caps on. So I have this right here. So a Boolean with polygons, I've gone over that before. Let's do a Boolean with NURBS. I've never done that on the channel before. So Boolean. So for polygon Booleans, if I go to the edit, I'm sorry, the mesh menu, we have Booleans, and you notice it says union, difference, and intersection, right? Those are our Boolean commands for polygons. If I go over here to surfaces now, we go down to the bottom, we have booleans. Now look, it says union tool, difference tool, intersection tool. So they have this word tool at the end. And Maya is composed of tools and actions. So the polygon boolean, these are do not have the word tool on them. These are actions. Whenever I apply the difference polygon boolean, it happens right away. With these surfaces boolean difference tool, I have to go through a couple more steps. So the difference tool, the way it works, I don't have to have anything selected. If I click on the difference tool, the first thing, you can see down here in the help line, actually it tells you what to do, but the first thing you have to do is select the first object. And the first object is usually the object that will be remaining after a difference happens. So I'll select the sphere, and then the, my help line tells me select additional models for that first object, or just hit enter. So I'll hit enter now, and then select one for the second object, which is the cylinder in this case, and hit enter again. And you'll see there it creates the Boolean operation where the cylinder cuts a hole through the sphere. And you might look at this and like, oh wow, look at that, we've done it. We've created this 3D volumetric shape just like polygons do with NURBS. But if you look at it, these are separate shapes like that. So it's not exactly 
creating the whole shape. Look at my outliner here. You see NURBS Boolean surface is a kind of a group object. We have this surface and this surface in, inside this group. Or I can also go back to my history as well and I can change that. Just because of history I can change the shape of it which is kind of neat. So here if we look at our sphere you'll see that well if you look at the isoparms they're just running up here and stopping all of a sudden right? So there's something that's not, this is obviously not just a plane. There's something else happening here. And what's happening is with NURBS you can do what's called a trim surface, a trim surface, or a surface trim. And what's happening is it's essentially almost like applying a transparency to the sphere so that the cylinder looks like it's carving a hole in it when it's not actually. It's a little bit harder to explain than that. So if I were to right click on the sphere, you'll notice that I have an additional component that I didn't have before. Can you catch it? Here it is, trim edge. That was not there before. This is a new component that has been added to my sphere after I've done the boolean. The trim edge. If I click on that, I can select this edge around the opening of the sphere because this is a new uh, component of this sphere. You see it's actually divided into two pieces like here because of that seam running through there as my guess is why that is. So I have two trim edges through here, trim curves. If so if I right click again and let's choose control vertex for example, you'll notice that the pole of the sphere, all these vertices are there and if I highlight them you can definitely see those lines going right through there. They're just invisible. There's a trim happening. A trim is, a, like I said, it's kind of masking pieces of that geometry that are there, but they're not there. They're being masked and I can manipulate them and it will affect the geometry. You can see that. And you see it's kind of tearing away from the hole now. The hole's not perfect anymore because I've manipulated that geometry. So NURBS take a lot more work, I feel, to get similar results as polygons do, but I just wanted to make this quick little, it's not really quick anymore, but I want to make this little video trying to kind of explain NURBS surfaces in this way and how they're different from polygons and how you would work with them. Um, not just for you, but also Ivan, my uh, very generous patron, and this does not count as his personal video. This is a video I want to do for all of you guys, too. Uh, I'll make a, a more personal video for him for the, his uh, questions. Uh, but I want to make this first because I feel like it will benefit both you, Ivan and all of you as well, the rest of my audience, to kind of just to be aware of how these NURB services kind of work and how they interact. This is very uh, scratching the surface of NURBs. NURBs are obviously very extensive. They have, they have this whole menu dedicated to all these different commands you can do with NURBs. I have gone over some of the other commands. Like I, I have gone over some of the, a couple of the surface fillets, for example, and things of that nature. But yeah, I just wanted to really show you this just because when it comes to, you know, boolean, bull, doing boolean commands with NURBs and cutting holes in them and extruding them like you would polygons, it's just not the same. You have to do things a bit uh, differently. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, helping you understand a little bit more, maybe not a whole lot, but a little bit more about NURBS as we maybe move forward. I'll do more NURBS videos in the future to go over more of the NURBS uh, f uh, specific commands and we'll keep going from there. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to let me know. If you are interested in becoming a patron, I do have other uh, patron levels, including the one that uh, Ivan has generously subscribed to. Uh, otherwise, thanks again for watching. I uh, Thanks again for supporting the Maya Toolbelt. And I will talk to you guys all later.